Notts is an ugly city. This doesn't mean I dislike it. In fact, it holds great appeal. But unfortunately, the ugliness is not confined to the architecture. It includes the council and the police. But we're going to concentrate, sort of, on the architecture in this video, rather than the ne'er-do-wells. The purpose of this mid-October visit to Notts was the Alien Encounters exhibition at Nottingham Contemporary. This was the last exhibition under director Alex Farkerson, who has now moved to the post of director at Tate Britain. Under Farkerson, the exhibitions have been never less than interesting, and one hopes his successor continues in the same vein. Anyway, this isn't a Notts Contempt piece. Let's head to Clumber Street, where there were already Christmas lights strung up. Christmas lights in the middle of October. Deary me. Competing with the commercial ugliness of Christmas lights, at the south end of Clumber Street on the corner of Long Row is the late 1950s architectural ugliness of Allen House. There are too many Allen Houses blighting the centre of knots. Heading south leads to the junction of Albert Street, Low Pavement, Listergate and Castlegate. The east side of the junction hosts a former warehouse. The former warehouse is an 1850 construction designed by Nottingham-based architect Thomas Chambers Hine. Sadly, the structure, which to my eyes has a Moorish air to it, was defiled with stucco in the mid-1900s. Hine has many buildings dotted around Notts, including Nottingham Great Northern Railway Station, the Corn Exchange on Thurland Street and the Adams Building, now New College, Nottingham. While taking photos on this crossroads, a lady approached and asked if I wished to sample some chocolate. The question was so unexpected it took me all my limited mental capacities to politely decline. Now if she'd been offering Sultana scone sampling, I would have gladly trotted off with her. Northwest on 22 St James's Street, the Cookie Club resides. The Cookie Club used to be my club of choice when drinking in knots but I haven't visited for a couple of years. It's presently undergoing refurbishment, so it can't be anyone's club of choice at the moment. The Cookie Club moved to its St James Street location from its previous home of 9 Pelham Street, which is now Tilt Blues and Cocktail Bar. Continuing west on St James's Street, we reach ugliness personified, made Marion Way populated with nondescript office blocks and architecturally disgusting hotels, Maid Marion Way is a four-lane nightmare, rivaling anything Falkirk or St Helens possesses to assault one's eyes with. Jumping northeast to Upper Parliament Street, amongst the sometimes tatty and closed-down shops nestles Foxes at number 67. I'm enamoured by 1920s tiled buildings, and Foxes is no exception. Built in 1928 and originally named the Fox Inn, it was a home brewery tied house. Home brewery was located in the Nottingham suburb of Daybrook on Mansfield Road. The brewery closed in 1996. East to Theatre Square, we encounter the wedding cake hideousness of the Theatre Royal. Who knows, behind all that disgustingly coloured stucco, there may be an aesthetically pleasing structure. No, it's a classical monstrosity. The elite building, with its niches on enriched brackets housing allegorical figures, is a little fussy for my austere tastes, but perhaps forgivable when you consider its original purpose was as a cinema. Designed by Adamson and Kins, the Elite Picture Theatre opened on August 22, 1921, showing Pollyanna starring Mary Pickford. There's a link to the cinema's interior photos in this video's description. Unbelievably, there were 1972 plans to demolish the Elite Building. Demolish the Theatre Royal, fair enough, but not the impressive Elite Building. Thankfully, the demolition plans were not executed. The cinema, however, closed five years later in March 1977. Grade 2 listed building status was granted in 1990. 
and its current purpose is retail and offices. Just east of the original Cookie Club location, on the corner of Thurland and Pelham Streets, resides Thurland Hall. Its stylings draw me to it every time I wander by, but I've never entered. I will try and remedy this next time I'm in town. The Thurland was the work of G.S. Doughty and was built between 1898 and 1900 in the Renaissance Revival style. Restoration was undertaken in 1990, with a further refurbishment in 2011. Heading towards the car, we reach one of my favourite knots areas, Hockley, though gentrification is diluting its appeal. If you get a chance on a sunny afternoon, and you can find a seat, the Broadway Cinema Terrace is a most pleasant place to have a drink and watch the world go by. We'll finish this wonder at Snenton Market. Work has nearly finished on a £3.85 million redevelopment. A redevelopment that will result in Snenton Market becoming part of the creative quarter. I used to love the seedy elegance of Snenton Market's avenues and will miss the edgy atmosphere. But I suppose that's progress. Nottingham Post, November 17, 2014 Traders are hopeful that the £3.85 million redevelopment of Snenton Market will transform it into the city's own Covent Garden. Building work on three of the market's five avenues in Feckingham Street officially began on Monday, November 17 and was marked by a groundbreaking ceremony. Construction company Waits moved on site last month and will be in charge of the transformation which aims to turn the rows of rundown units into a vibrant creative business community. The first phase of the refurbishment will be complete in April next year with full completion of the project scheduled for the end of 2015. The work forms part of the City Council's growth plan and was part funded by a £2.4 million European Regional Development Fund grant with £1.45 million additional funding from the Council. Councillor Nick MacDonald, portfolio holder for jobs and growth at Nottingham City Council, said, having worked for some time to bring Snenton Market back into full use, this event is a significant milestone in the regeneration of the city's creative quarter.